Indian boycott of Muslims, sculptors, mango sellers, and cab drivers targeted in India. Across the Indian state of uh, Karnataka, Muslim businesses have been facing increasing anti-Muslim sentiments caused by contentious political rhetoric. This is the same state which made international headlines over the controversy of banning the hijab in government-run schools and is seen by many as an experiment in the open marginalization of the Muslim population. In April, a right-wing Hindu group urged the public to boycott Muslim mango traders, claiming that the Muslims supposedly monopolize the mango trade in uh, uh, Karnataka. A call to ban Muslim sculptors from sculpting Hindu idols is also gaining traction. Uh, uh, st uh, this is a hard name. Stonic? Stonic. Srini Vasan of the Cheluvanaraya Swami Temple in Mel Melukote said he would campaign across uh, Karnataka to ban Muslim sculptors. Quote, the idols of Hindu gods sculpted by Muslim artists can't be installed in the Hindu temples. It is against the traditions, he said. In Bangalore, uh, Karnataka's capital, Calls to boycott Muslim cab drivers and tour operators are rising. A far-right Hindu group, uh, Baharathra Rakshana Vedike, or BRV, leads the campaign. According to Bahra Shetty, president of the BRV, dealing with Muslim businesses disrespects Hindu culture and traditions. Quote, they call us kafirs, and just as their religion is important to them, ours is to us. Shetty said. Saroj uh, Chadha of the Times of India speculates that the hijab row has opened a Pandora's box of increasing pressure against Muslims, including Muslim businesses. Um, with the sculpt, you know, the idol one, the Muslims making idol one, this is just Hindus helping Muslims also follow their religion. I mean, Muslims are not supposed to make Hindu idols. I don't know what the hell is happening there. So I think like maybe this is like, this is, a, I don't, okay. So I don't know, in Islam, you're not allowed to make statues. You know that? Like you're not allowed to make any figurines of any kind, let alone pagan really? idols. Is, the, is that just like the hardcore Salafis no. who believe that? Well, the hardcore Salafis are the more accurate ones. <laughs> 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 <So>. <laughs> They are the they're, they're more ac the most accurate Islam, um, but okay. So maybe the hardcore Salafis will say, "Do not make an image of anything." Okay, but the idea of not making idols for P Hindus that is everybody. I mean, that is like not everybody apparently because some people are in India are making <laughs> like I want to meet the Muslims who are making idols for. I, that's kind of base actually. You know, like, you know what, <laughs> like, I'm doing, I can't, this is the most haram thing <laughs> you can do. Like, hey, like, this is business. Like, these people need their idols. I'm going to make their idols. Like, can you imagine, like, I don't know if you can comprehend how big of a, sh how, how much of a haram this is. Like, I kind of no, like it. This is like really, it. I think, this is very I think taboo. It, it is taboo, but I think people I like don't it. understand how much, there is, I don't know if cohesion is the right word, almost an interplay between Hinduism and Islam or the communities of them in the subcontinent. Like, I remember I in the past year, I've read multiple stories about um, Hindus who do the calligraphy, the Islamic calligraphy on, you know, Islamic temples in Bangladesh. It's so or based. Muslim sculptors who... Um, you know, make Hindu idols or that they build their temples and, uh, or um, is... a, 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 a Muslim a Muslim florist who provides the garlands every day for the statues of Ambedkar, you know, like the, I love it. This is them coming, exactly. Hindus and like, coming this is, together. Why are you ruining? This is, this is actually beautiful. what the reality of India is. There aren't yeah really historically like strict barriers in this way like this so they're coming to, to get, create so this strict means... segregation is 
so antithetical to what the actual lives of people have been like for generations. It, 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 yeah, it, it this is like, so you're so, saying it seems anti, it seems antithetical to what India really is, is to me. Yeah. So you're saying, you know, Hindus and Muslims in India are so much the same people that even religion sometimes fails to spread them apart to keep them away from each other right yeah. so this is these are this hinduism and islam is just some made up nonsense that the people that are with from all accounts just the same people they sometimes they realize that we're just the same people and they just want to work with each other and just want to live with each other and they want mm -hmm. to provide services to each other and then these radicals come and say, like, just ruin it for everybody, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. I'm reading articles about how there are Hindus doing the paintings and, like, um, calligraphy on, you know, on Hindus doing this on mosques in Bangladesh, <laughs> you know, like, this isn't as... Um, it, 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 it isn't everyone's experience that these are as diametrically opposed as people would like the, the, their fellow populace to believe. Right. I think wait, there's wait, something what? else really important. So, there, there's just so many, like what all these examples I was talking about, granted they are anecdotes, but it just goes to show that these, these communities are not as diametrically opposed as other right. people would like them to believe. But, okay. But I also just like the idea of a Muslim making a Hindu idol. I don't know why I like about it. It's just so blasphemous. Like to me, that is the most yeah. blasphemous thing a Muslim can do, right? Like you're not like you're, you're making an, okay. So the entire, the entire Genesis of Islamic story whether like in the Quran um, or in the, uh, you know, or in Sunnah, you can see that it's either the story of Abraham being against the idols, right? Um, or Muhammad being against the idols, right? Like being anti the idols of Quraysh is the most fundamental part of Muhammad's ideology, right? Like there's nothing like idol worship is the most taboo, most disgusting, most sinful thing anybody could do. And just being so doing endorsing anything idol related, like there's nothing in Islam like okay, the most sinful thing in Islam is shirk, right? Having partners to God. And the most uh, obvious and the most the boldest symbol of shirk is an idol so for a muslim to make an idol for idol worshipers to worship is the most blasphemous thing i've ever heard of <laughs> and that's why i love it <laughs> and that's why i don't want anybody to stop this why are you doing this is beautiful let them make you they're making you idols let them make you idols what's wrong with you okay anyway they are also trying to help these Muslims, okay? Really observe Tahweed correctly, okay? The Sarat yeah, Mustaqeen, we're helping you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, do you have some start comments? Do you want to highlight those? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Forever Storming scene. These are not fanatic Muslims. They just want to learn a living, earn a living. Earn. Most of them are really poor. Obviously, they're not fanatics if they're engaging in this kind of behavior, which is so heavily taboo in Islam. Yeah. Um, and Eric Olson gave a comment that I want to dive into in a second. Eric is saying, I heard reports of businesses planning to leave Karnataka for other states like Tamil Nadu. If that's true, I hope it happens very fast. Uh, Karnataka should play, pay a heavy price. So we're going to, we're going to get into this in a second, because this has huge implications economically for all of India, not just this state, but it is true. There are businesses because of the, the, the how the escalation the violence the temperature that has been raised in the state it there are many industries that are looking to move and leave because it is actually a threat to the stability of their ability to do business to be in this environment so there are lots of this is another reason why this is really harmful to all indians not just the muslims because if businesses are pulling out this is going to harm everyone in those states um katie is saying uh oh wait no that was a fragment i think that was part of something else 
Um, and Katie, in response to what I was saying, kind of about this interplay of communities and cultures, Katie's saying it's true, actually. Muslims make Hindu idols, Hindus eat biryani on Hindu festivals, at least in my state, where it's not taboo to eat meat during festivals. And saying there's bigotry, but there's not this level of segregation without some very tribalistic people. Yes, I completely agree. And the open push for segregation is which is very shocking to me as someone who comes from a country that has obviously a very contentious history of segregation and how um, it's it's so taboo. It's like in my culture scene, it's like one of the worst things on the world, right? So to have it be so normalized to just like boycott and segregate another community, it's frankly like really incomprehensible for me. Um, and uh, Bengali Hindu is saying Southern states are not so are not so poor unlike Hindi states. God knows what will happen to them in the future. Yeah. Um, Eric is saying the Muslims being harassed are very poor and are, most are from lower castes. That's something we need to note. Yeah, it's it's very true. Uh, this is something that I think is not talked about enough is that the majority um, Muslims do come from low caste backgrounds, which is you know, theorized as part of what pushed these communities originally to adopt Islam is to try to escape casteism. Now there's still casteism in Muslim communities in India, but you know, this is some of the historical context. Um, I think one thing I really wanted to talk about was how um, this, this is very important. So I'm going to read a quote from the Deacon, Deacon Herald, which wrote a very good article about the economic boycott of Muslims recently. The Deacon Herald is um, based in Karnataka. So it's saying, um, unfortunately, there is scant data on the economic losses being suffered by those bearing the brunt of calls for economic boycotts by hardline Hindus. One key reason is that, quote, Muslims are largely concentrated in the informal sector, which is hardly reported in surveys. The high concentration in self-employment itself is an indication of the vulnerable condition of Muslims. The target of such boycott calls is is these self-employed workers as they depend on their customers for their livelihood. If such calls for a boycott succeed, these small businesses will be forced to sell their products only in Muslim localities. This will further intensify the existing religion-based occupational segregation. So this is an open effort to actually like ghettoize these communities because they won't, and there's been so many instances where people are selling bangles, you know, like the bracelets and they, they get kicked out of selling anywhere except like Muslim neighborhoods and districts. Um, I also want to note that part of this larger story is a big controversy over selling halal meat. That was very complicated and confusing for me. So I, I don't want to get into it because the details didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, but I do want to note that that is something that's happening. Um, and um, so, uh, wait, there was one thing I really want to read. Um, where was it? Basically, okay, here it goes. So it's, the article says, can a country that uses democracy as its calling card and aspires to be an inclusive global manufacturing hub continue with domestic politics of exclusion of a section of its people? Quote, India aspires to be an inclusive global manufacturing hub. There have been efforts to attract foreign companies in India. However, India's foreign direct investment, uh, direct investment has gone down in 2021. Total FDI inflow in India declined from uh, to 74 billion in the calendar year of 2021, 50% lower than the previous year. The political environment in the country plays an important role in attracting foreign investment. Quote, no investor will be interested in investing in a situation where there is such a risk of disturbance, said Khalid Khan. Many uh, among the majority community are also beginning to realize the corrosive impact this is having on social harmony and the economy at large. Denial of the rights of Muslims to do business on equal footing with other communities is a denial of their equal citizenship. Bottom line, there are no winners in this game in the long run. If the Hindutva Brigade persists with the agenda of pitting Indians against Indians and the majority against minorities through economic boycotts, no one will emerge unscathed. I really like that article, and I really think that that put things into um, perspective. Also, Telangana extended an open invitation to an entrepreneur to come to Hyperabad as it has better infrastructure, both physical and social. Tamil Nadu has said it is ready to welcome companies that want to move out of Karnataka amid the growing tension. 
So to Armin's point, what you were saying earlier about power capitalism, this plays into it as well. All right. See, I told you, I told you this is going to be costly. Um, okay, but read the Qasim, like we want to see if Qasim is asking a com comment regarding what, whether, well, wait, you, you, you removed oh. it. Oh, sorry. Or did you remove the comment? Okay. Here, this one. Um, Qasim is saying, do mo Muslims protest people for eating in public during Ramadan? In India, he <laughs> means. Um, not that I'm yeah. aware of. Maybe it happens. I don't know. Okay. We can, people we can in keep India, give me your perspective. Um, I don't think no wait I don't think that happens I think that would be like that would be a major escalation Muslims are not like as a minority that would like welcome a lot of attacks on them so may, I don't think that happens in India you correct correct us if I'm wrong about that they already yeah, faced enough problems just for doing the Muslim public um yeah. Eric Olson is saying the KKR company a VC firm declined India back in 2020 before the great illness struck it was already on a downward spiral did they explicitly say why like as did the um forever stormy is saying i think we are overestimating how much fanatic hindus care about the economy plus any company shifting to another state will be targeted by the modi government which controls the federal government wait we are saying that like the whole point is that they don't that's why they're damaging the economy yeah the, the, the we're whole saying point that they is should that the no, I mean, like the reason why they're so harmful to the economy because their ideology matters to them more than the economy. That's how. That's why it's harmful mm -hmm. to the economy. So I think we're doing the opposite. Um, yeah, we're trying to say like they're not considering the larger the economy. economic impact. This is going to yes. happen. Exactly. You know, who's yeah, you know, people watching from the outside or even from other states are like, oh yeesh, I am not going to engage and invest over there. You know, that affects everyone.